In today's video, we discuss why doing 32 sets of total volume per body part might help you increase your strength and muscle size. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I'm gonna do a review of a study that was released and it was actually discussed in this month's issue of MASS, the monthly application of strength sport. And for those that aren't familiar, I'll put a link below, but MASS basically puts out information reviewing studies that are related to strength, muscle, body composition, all the things that we're interested in. So if you're interested in something like that, it helps me learn more, keep up with the current research. This week's article was done by Mike Zordos. Now Mike is a good friend of mine and he is a professor at Florida Atlantic University and loves him some periodization training. He actually popularized daily undulating periodization a few years ago. It is a wonderful training modality and it is still being researched. And so what I really like that Mike did this discussion because what the study aimed to do was look at what was better for muscle and strength. They had groups of individuals who had been training for at least three years. So when you consider someone to be a beginner, these studies often can portray things to be a little bit off because beginners respond very well to almost anything. However, to take people in that have been training for three years, that is an intermediate to an advanced lifter. And so now we can start to look at how are they impacted by this study design. Now the study design was basically 16 sets, 24 sets, or 32 sets spread out over two training sessions per week. And they looked at the vastus lateralis, and for those that aren't familiar, that is the outside muscle on the quadricep, the biceps, and the triceps. And they measured muscle thickness, but they also tracked strength over this eight week training program. And what they found was essentially that the 32 set group had greater increases in strength and hypertrophy. However, it gets a little bit deeper than that when you start to consider that the training sessions were always eight to 10 repetitions, meaning the one group with only 16 sets would do say four sets of bench for eight to 10 reps with one minute rest between and each set going to failure. Now, if you do that twice a week, that is not periodized training. You're simply doing a training block that is not periodized. However, when you look at the overall research that's out there, in fact, Mass reviewed an article by D'Souza that showed if you are able to do something called periodization or daily undulating periodization, meaning instead of doing something like eight to 10 reps, you do five to eight reps or maybe 15 to 20 reps. Those would be changes in periodization. Well, you actually get quicker increases in muscle hypertrophy and strength. So although this study design did a great job of looking at what can happen between sets, it did not actually look at what would happen if you change the periodization. And I'll explain why that's important in just a moment. The other thing to consider is that the squat, and this is something that I experienced myself, is a skill. Meaning, the more you perform it, the better you get at it. And it's not always just about muscular strength, it's about neural adaptations. It's much like any other skill. If you think of things like throwing a baseball, hitting a golf ball, these are skills that our muscles have to adapt to. And we get better at the skill over time. And the squat is certainly something that the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it. The more muscles are firing in unison to help you perform. So certainly when I'm developing, say, a powerlifting program for someone, I wanna make sure that they're getting a high number of repetitions performing the squat so they get good at performing the squat. However, when it comes to a bodybuilder who I'm trying to put the most muscle on, I often think what is the best lift for that lifter to do that is gonna require the least likelihood of injury. Because as we train and the longer we train, what tends to happen is the closer our threshold is for growth, it becomes very close to the same threshold for injury. Beginners and intermediate can often increase volume, increase training frequency for long periods of time without issue. But when you start getting nagging injuries, it's usually because you're now at this point where the threshold for increasing your strength and muscle is very close to where you get injured. So a great experiment for you would be, take a look at your total training volume. That is sets times reps times weight. Now this group, they actually broke their workouts up over twice a week. I love this. You get engagement twice a week in the same muscle group. I have found in my experience, the best training program possible is called non-linear periodization, where you're training in a strength group once a week and you're tra training in a, in a hypertrophy rep range the other time. So 
one time a week you're training a muscle group, you're going heavier, okay? So for the bigger body parts, that might be five to 10 reps. And then later in the week, you're training that same muscle group, but you're doing things like eight to 12 to 20 reps, maybe even more for the legs. What I have found is that the lower body muscles can probably take more training volume than we can handle, okay? Mentally, it just breaks you down. And so what tends to happen is that for people to really grow their legs, they have to push through some pain barriers, their workouts. You almost have to be willing to suffer. Whereas with the upper body, the training volume is not so intense that you feel like you're going to like vomit or not be able to walk for several days. You have to, for the lower body, oftentimes be able to push through to another level. As someone that's been training for 25 years, what I find interesting about this study is that through different parts of my career in lifting, I have definitely found that I have made great progress by having a huge increase in my training volume. However, I was not able to maintain that training volume for long periods of time without getting injured. So where does that leave us? The best thing we can do is have short periods, micro cycles of higher volume, and then have short cycles of lower volume, okay? So micro cycles or deloads that allow us to recover and progress. These type of training cycles show that you can get recovery and progress and last longer with less risk of injury. Now, I think all of us that are gonna lift for the rest of our lives are going to run into injury, but it's figuring out where those thresholds are, getting very efficient at the lifts, and paying attention to your body that really allow you to continue to progress as a bodybuilder for a long period of time. But certainly, looking at your training volume and trying to figure out ways to increase it, whether that's more frequency or more sets and reps per session, well, that is kind of the joy that is bodybuilding. That is the thing that I have really come to enjoy. Setting PRs is not something that you can do all the time. However, you can continue to set PRs in training volume, kind of how much work you get in a single session, and over time, it just becomes a passion to figure out where you lie. Even though these studies are great, nothing is going to replace your experience going into the gym, tracking your training, and looking how you progress over time. We are our own best teachers. And while these studies are wonderful, they're never going to be able to encompass completely who we are. They're just guidelines for what we can do. And this study certainly showed that there can be a benefit to higher volume. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. I hope you guys are having an awesome weekend. I'm headed to my sister's wedding. What? Uh, yeah, my baby sister's getting married. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon.